Now, I guess I should have prefaced this whole video with, in order for this to work, you're going to need an open VPN uh, client. Uh, I use private internet access. There are a lot of them out there and I will try to have some links in the description where you can get a compatible VPN if you don't already have one. Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, recently, somebody put in a request for a video talking about how to install transmission on a Raspberry Pi, but the caveat to that was they wanted transmission to run through a VPN. Now, if you're not sure what transmission is, it's a torrent client. Uh, so basically torrent is a peer to peer network. I only encourage the use of torrenting for downloading things like operating systems. If you're really into checking out new versions of Linux and things like that, uh, torrenting is a great way to help those nonprofit organizations uh, reduce server load because you're not downloading directly from their servers. You're actually downloading from other people who have those files available. So you're actually reducing the cost of, of maintaining those servers for those organizations. Now, if you're only gonna download things that are uh, free and open source and legal to download, why would you do this through a VPN? And the answer to that is simple, that a lot of ISPs will block torrent traffic or slow it down to a crawl so that you won't do it because they're afraid that you're going to do something nefarious with it. Now, again, I'm only saying you should use torrents to download legal things, uh, things that you have the legal right to download for free. That's very important here. So with all that being said, let's actually jump over to my desktop and take a look at this. This is actually super, super easy. So here we are. We're actually in Open Media Vault here. Uh, the first thing we want to do uh, because of the way uh, transmission is set up, the way it works, uh, what we're going to do first is actually create a new shared folder for it. So we'll click over here on shared folders. <clears throat> I'm going to click add. I'm going to call this torrents. And, uh, and the device will be my two terabyte drive there. Uh, it automatically creates the path. And then uh, I'm going to just allow everybody to read and write to that. And then one last thing we need to do here in order to get access to the files we download is we need to make that share available on the network. So what we'll do is actually jump over here to shares and click on add. Uh, we're going to just select the share or the, the folder we created there. We're going to say public is only guest and we'll say save. Now you may have a different, uh, a different reason, or you may want to, for your own reasons, change the permissions on that for whatever reason. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna make it free and open for anybody to access who's on the network. So <clears throat> uh, what I'll do now is I'll click apply up here and say yes. And I guess while that's doing its thing, uh, what I can do is come up here and uh, do backslash backslash and then how, uh, hopefully that'll work, there we go. Uh, so we can see that we've got backups, config, databases, external, uh, and then here in just a moment, uh, once that is done uh, configuring and applying and doing all of its stuff, uh, we'll be able to uh, drag, oops, drag this back up here. There it is. It actually just created that right there. Um, so if we open this up, there's nothing in there because there shouldn't be. So next thing we can do uh, is actually just drag this over and minimize it. And then we can come over to Portainer. Uh, we wanna come over here and create a new stack. And then we'll add a stack and then in my notes down here, which I will have uh, made available uh, in the description down below, uh, what I'm gonna do is copy this and just paste it up here. And then we need to give that a name. So I'm just gonna call it transmission. Now, to kind of go through this, uh, like it says here, version two, that's normal services, transmission with open VPN, that's normal. Now, I guess I should have prefaced this whole video with, in order for this to work, you're going to need an open VPN uh, client. Uh, I use private internet access. There are a lot of them out there and I will try to have some links in the description where you can get a compatible VPN if you don't already have one. So uh, below that, we've got volumes. Uh, this is SRV dev disk by label file slash torrents. If we come back over to here and um, go to shared folders, uh, here we can see SRV dev disk by label file slash torrents. Uh, that is right there and that's mapped to the data folder. Um, so then below that, we can say our open VPN provider in my case is PIA. Uh, you may need to change that to match your provider. But again, for the sake of this video, I'm using PIA. Uh, there's open VP VPN config. Uh, basically that's where you wanna route your traffic through uh, I actually have right here, again, this is from open or from PIA, private internet access. Um, and you can just kind of select whatever country you want from this list uh, to go uh, right here in this config. Now below that, you're gonna put in your username and password for your VPN client. Uh, web proxy enabled, I leave that false. Your local network, you'll need to change this to match your network. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos or we've talked about things like Mac VLANs and things like that, uh, you'll know that my, my network is 
whatever. Uh, you may you may have a one there or a zero there instead of that six, eight, and you'll want to adjust this to match your network. <clears throat> Below that, we're gonna add some capabilities for admin. Uh, we're gonna do some logging, uh, just four logs to keep track of what's going on in the system. Uh, below that, we've got port 9091, and uh, that's how we're gonna access the dashboard for it. And the, below that, we've got our image. Uh, we're gonna use this uh, Howgene or whatever, transmission open, open VPN. And we've added this tag right here to say that, hey, we're using an ARM processor. Uh, so that's just one of the variable tags that you can add to that to make sure you're getting the right image for your CPU architecture. Uh, once we've got all of this uh, lined up the way we wanna do it, we just come down here, click deploy, and wait for things to, uh, to finish up. Okay, so now that that's done, what we're gonna do is uh, actually just open up that stack. Uh, we're gonna open up, here we can see it's starting, uh, but what we're gonna do is actually look at the logs here um, and just make sure that uh, everything is good to go. Uh, it looks like this is all looking good. Um, so it's gonna check the port, make sure everything's going well uh, on the VPN provider side of things. Uh, and it should return something here in a second. That's great, the port is open, initial setup's complete. Uh, here we've got a token exp uh, expiration and uh, remaining. I'm actually not sure what those are for. Uh, maybe you guys can tell me that in the comment section down below. Um, so what we can do now is actually go back uh, to our containers and uh, find this, let's just click here. Hey guys, uh, this is Editing David. I, I went through the process of, of editing, or I'm in the process of editing this video, and I realized that I didn't show you uh, proof, I guess, that I was actually connected to the VPN. Uh, so what I wanna do is actually show you that before we click on port 9091 to look at the dashboard. So if we jump over here to my desktop, uh, we can see uh, transmission is up and running, it's healthy. Uh, obviously this happened way after uh, what you were just watching a second ago. Uh, so what we wanna do is actually uh, click on the uh, exec console right there. We'll click connect. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually just type in a quick command. It's gonna be curl. Uh, we're just gonna tell this to go fetch some information for us. I'm gonna say ifconfig.io and right here, 156.146.63142. That's not me. Uh, that is traffic running through the VPN. So we know that we are safe and secure as far as that's concerned. So uh, with that being said, let's go back and click on port 9091 to go look at the dashboard. There we go. So what I wanna do is uh, go to Ubuntu, uh, you know, or, or however you wanna spell that. Um, we're gonna go to alternative downloads here. Fine, we'll accept that. Uh, BitTorrent, we're gonna download the desktop for Ubuntu here, I'm gonna click that. So now we've got this torrent file that we've just downloaded. So what I wanna do is click upload, choose my file, go to Ubuntu. Um, and from here, we can just click upload. And uh, we'll give this a second to upload the file and think about what it's gonna do. Uh, so right now it's uh, it's still connecting. We can always come back over here and take a look at the logs. Um, nothing, no, no, nothing there uh, to worry about. So here we go. Now we're getting 1.65 megs down. That will fluctuate. Uh, and you can always change the, uh, the region from which your traffic is being directed. Uh, if you find something that's faster or, or, or less uh, latency or whatever, you can always change uh, the region in your stack in order to make this download faster or from a different area, whatever the case may be. So we'll go ahead and give this a moment to do its thing. Uh, and then we'll come back and take a look at how to access this file. Okay, so here we are. This is about to finish up. It's at 99.9% here. There we go. Now it's finished. So if we come back over here to our shared folders, uh, there's an incomplete and a completed. And so while it was downloading, we had uh, some stuff in here. And then once it completes, it goes right here into this completed folder. So you could realistically uh, map uh, this URL of, or this, this path. Of course, it would be the, the path on your system. Uh, but you could map this. But let's just do that real quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say map a network drive. And of course it brought it down there. So I'm just gonna paste that right there. T is, T is relevant, so let's go ahead and do that. Click on finish. And there it is. So let's close that. And if we scroll down right here, uh, we can see that, whoops, you know what? That, that's gonna be at the bottom of your screen. Right here is the, the folder that we just completed. Here we can see how much space is available on that drive. 
And if we open that up, so right here is the Ubuntu desktop that we just downloaded uh, from a peer-to-peer -peer network, avoiding the, the Ubuntu servers and thus saving them resources and of course then in turn money. So uh, this is why I encourage people to use torrenting when it comes to downloading open source software and operating systems and things like that, things that are legal to download from wherever, uh, just to help alleviate the stress of their servers. So that's the process. It's very easy. It's just a quick stack. I'll also try to have links to PIA. That's the VPN that I use. It's the one I use on my phone, my computer. I also use it for, uh, for stacks like this. So I'll try to have all of this linked in the description down below. Of course, while you're down there, there are a couple of other links that if you wouldn't mind taking a look at, I would really appreciate. Uh, the first one is coffee. That's like a one-time tip jar. There's also Patreon. Uh, where you can become a member of uh, the group of patrons I've got over there. I want to give a big shout out to the patrons who help me month after month after month. Thank you guys so much. Uh, also, I will have a link to all of the parts and pieces I use on my Raspberry Pi home server. Uh, parts from uh, Canakit, where they're actually the ones that sent me the Raspberry Pi. Argon40 uh, sent over the case that I'm using, so I have a link to that. Sabrent sent over an M.2 NVMe drive as well as an enclosure. So I want to give a big shout out to those guys for making this video possible by providing me with the hardware that I needed for this. So uh, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.